Welcome to our tutorial on RFM6 for Beginners. In this video, we will guide you through the process of creating a new model and defining the base data. Let's start by opening RFM6. When you launch the software, you will see an empty work window. To create a new model, click on the New Model button up at the top left hand corner. In the new window, we will define the base data for our model. The window is divided into several tabs. Let's begin with the main tab. Enter the desired model name, along with the description if you'd like. In the project area, you can assign the new model to an existing project or create a new project to save your model. And then for this tutorial, we won't create a project. In the type of model area, you can select the kind of model you want to create. You can choose between one-dimensional, two-dimensional, or three-dimensional models based on your requirements. RFM6 also allows you to create one- or two-dimensional models with three-dimensional loadings and a bitmap that can be used for visualization. To define the units and decimal places, you can click on the symbol in the bottom left-hand corner. This is where you can select the desired category on the left-hand side, and then you can set the units on the right-hand side. You can also switch between imperial and metric units by going down to the symbol down here and clicking load save template and selecting between imperial and metric and you can also choose the default which you would like here on the right hand side. We're going to stick with imperial and click OK and then click OK again through this dialog box. Now let's move on to the add-ons tab. This is an important change to note compared to RFM5. With this change, now you can define certain design parameters while you're modeling, which saves you time. Up in the top right hand corner, this is where the standards for classification and wizards area is. And this tool allows you to define load combinations, wind loads and snow loads automatically if you have these options checked on. For this tutorial, we will activate the structure stability add-on along with the steel design add-on. Now let's move on to the standards tab. This is where you can select your desired standard along with the national annex if applicable. You can also choose the design standards down here as well. Next, we're gonna go on to the settings and options tab. This is where we can adjust additional settings like the acceleration of gravity, directions of axes, and model tolerances. For this tutorial, we're going to keep all this by default and move on to the Model Parameters tab. In this tab, you can enter the exact location of your structure. With this, RFM6 can automatically determine wind, snow, and seismic loads based on the selected standard and annex. There's also an option where you can import the location from a map using the symbol and the... For example, I could type in Philadelphia and choose Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Then, based on the standard, I can see all of the parameters based for snow, wind, tornado, or seismic. Then, once I click OK, this information will be loaded into RFM6. We aren't going to cover the remaining tabs in this tutorial. Once you've made all the necessary changes, click OK. Another change in RFM6 compared to RFM5 is that once you click OK, the file does not yet exist. So to save the file, Go up here to File and click either Save or Save As. Click OK. And this is where you can select the storage location of the file. This concludes our video on creating a new model and defining the base data in RFM6. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact our online support. Thank you for watching and until next time.